What's up everyone, welcome to another episode of Everything Entrepreneurial with me, Curtis Harley. Everything Entrepreneurial is a bi-weekly podcast for people interested in entrepreneurship. This week I was out and about and I met up with Robert Fitzhugh. Rob is an entrepreneur with a background in filmmaking and festival management. He started the Dublin Smartphone Film Festival, which is a festival dedicated to films shot entirely on mobile. He also runs Film Smart Productions where he teaches people the tools and confidence to create their own video content using their phones. And just a quick heads up, as we recorded this outside, um, there is some wind and noise in the background, but it's still good enough to listen in. Okay, so let's get straight into today's podcast. So tell us a little bit about how you came to be an entrepreneur yourself, Rob. Oh God, it's a long and long and winding road. Uh, so I suppose uh, where it started for me uh, was uh, filmmaking. Uh, I originally, I was a filmmaker. Um, and I had been looking to uh, create a film festival. Uh, I had a background in festival management, and I really wanted to get into kind of the film festival market here in Ireland. Yeah. I had a background in the art scene here for about 15 years, and I was very, very interested in kind of um, filmmaking, and I'd never done it, and I wanted to really get into it, and I wanted to kind of understand it a little bit. Uh, and at the same time, I wanted to set up an event, but the festival market in Dublin at the time in Ireland was kind of oversaturated. There was a number of tools okay. online. Film Freeway, I don't know if you're familiar with it, was, a, was an online tool uh, for filmmakers and festivals, and it's an easy way for them to connect. Um, and it's great because when I started years ago, you had to send off a physical film to a festival, you know, to physically oh, right. pack it and post it, and now you can do it all online. You can set up an account, and it would connect with Film Freeway and it, was, it made the whole process easier. The only downside is it made creating film festivals a lot easier, which meant there was an oversaturation in the market. Okay. And I think at the, t- the time that I uh, started all this process, there was something like 50 film festivals in Dublin alone between March and October of each year. Uh, so I wanted to do a festival, but I couldn't think of something that was interesting enough to, to do. Uh, this is a long and winding story. Uh, uh, but at the same time, I was studying film and I found that uh, the way I was being taught film was not necessarily reflective of the way people were making films in Ireland or even the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now everyone had a, a, a good quality camera in their pocket and they were able to go off and they were able to tell their own stories. They were able to write, edit, shoot, market, score, distribute themselves. all themselves in the palm of their hands. And they didn't really need to go through this whole process. Now, there was still a stigma that came with shooting stuff on your phones. But at the same time, there was an accessibility to it. And if you had looked at any kind of interview with any director worth their salt, they would say, you need to be out there making constantly whatever camera you can get your hands on. You need to make, to make, make. And that's how you learn. So I was studying film and I, I found it to be just a, a, a bit of a, an old fashioned way of, of of looking at it and I'd go in every day and I'd study and I'd come out and it was just not reflective of what you could do. So somewhere along the line I started shooting uh, uh, making movies using my phone and, and, and what was great about using your phone was is that it was uh, it demystified the entire process. So I wasn't a tech person and I had a story and the blocking points for me to tell that story were I didn't understand cameras, I didn't yeah. understand editing, uh, they were just they were expensive, I didn't have any money. Yeah. Using my phone eliminated all that. It made it affordable. It made me easy to understand. There was apps that allowed me to understand the filmmaking yeah. process a little bit easier. So I launched into that two feet, started making stuff using my phone, um, started passing it around, trying to get it submitted to festivals, realized there wasn't much in the way of, of, uh, of festivals out there catering for phones at the time. Yeah. So I set up the Dublin Smartphone Film Festival. Um, and that was kind of the genesis of where FilmSmart, uh, which is my new company, uh, came from. Essentially, I, I launched into the festival um, and I was kind of using it as a showcase for the best and brightest of kind of filmmakers internationally. Yeah. Uh, I found, frustratingly enough at the time, that I wasn't getting a whole lot of Irish submissions to the festival. I was getting tons. The international community had really taken this uh, this kind of device and run with it. Um, and, and really, it was just an extra, to use an expression, it was just another crayon to tell a story. To yeah. So people were out there using their phones to tell these incredible stories. And I, I didn't really feel there was much of a, a pickup in, in Ireland. In Ireland. That's crazy that there's a, like a, there was a di- obviously a big difference between yeah. international and... I think it was just an attitude, a mindset. There was very much a mindset at the time that... And, and, and still... I mean, I can see it changing rapidly, but there was very much a mindset at the time that was very much like, sure, it's great if you're an amateur or it's niche, less to look, but you'll never be taken seriously. And I would often see online comments to that effect where people are like, yeah, you can do it, but it's not going to get you anywhere. And I used to call it an equipment arms race when I was in college where it was... 
everyone was so obsessed with having the best camera for right. how much it costs because they equated the the price of their equipment to the quality of their story right and really all they would do is have a if you didn't know how to use your camera it's not you'd have anything expensive looking crap yeah. and b expensive brick yeah a brick you don't know <laughs> use and b you uh you were you were equating value with story and at the end they were spending so much time trying to source the best camera and they were spending very little time on your story at least when you were shooting on your phone you were able to drill it down to the yeah. essentials and you were able to tell a really good story and at the end of the day as a filmmaker a lot of times i found that people were making films for the filmmakers and they weren't making films for an audience and an audience if it's a really good story with really good audio and really good audio is very important and um, you can tell it in any capacity and um, the uh, you can tell it really in any capacity and the audience you know for the most part won't even notice um, yeah so that was kind of the genesis for that so i was making things on my phone i was running the festival and then i started teaching um, and at the same time i was doing a lot of corporate content for for a, 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 a company i worked for at the time i was making a lot of their marketing content in-house um, and i was able to do it uh, without outsourcing it to a third-party company using minimal equipment so i had i had they covered X amount of equipment. I think it was 1,500 euros worth of equipment. Yeah. And I was able to uh, make all their content. I think it was 20 videos a year. Uh, that was write, shoot, and edit them uh, all on Great top of an existing job. Like, a cost effective because at the time that I had started it, they were outsourcing these videos to a third-party company, and I think they were paying. Uh, I think it was 10x. Simple. That yeah, would have it been was easily per video. Um, Jesus, so yeah. um, and and the quality they were getting back wasn't great, so I had agreed to do it for considerably cheaper in half the time, um, and that kind of got me thinking. I got cogs turned in my head because I'd already was already thinking about how accessible it was for filmmakers uh, to use their phones to tell stories, and then I started thinking, well, what about businesses? What about small businesses? What about kind of their ability to tell their story because in the end that's what businesses are doing yeah. they're trying to tell a story yeah and they're trying to craft a story about their business and why their business or service or product is the best so I that was kind of dominating in my mind and in order to combat the sort of attitude we were speaking about a moment ago yeah I started training and running workshops through the festival really for teaching filmmaking and it was really about kind of um the idea was really just to, to get people using their phones and then what I would do is I would give them uh, submission, free submissions to the festival and the idea was to travel around Ireland uh, running these workshops, get people making stuff on their phones, they could submit it for free to the festival at the end yeah. and it was really just to kind of drum up a community of, of filmmakers here in Ireland. Uh, and I found when I was running these workshops that um, a lot of people were attending them because they were small business owners and they were really wanted to kind of figure out some tips and hints yeah. in order to utilize the equipment they had Definitely. for marketing to tell their own to shoot their own video content and that sort of got me thinking and then I s decided I would uh, I would cater for that market and then I set up uh, film smart uh, which is the reason we're here today yeah and film smart is geared towards that and it's about teaching uh, businesses and individuals the tips and tricks with minimum tools and minimum equipment to be able to go out and have and more importantly to have the confidence yeah. to be able to go out and kind of shoot their own videos yeah. and cut them together um, with ease and the idea is that they're able to kind of rather than rely on expensive third party companies that A are expensive B take time and, yeah. and, and with, with such a reliance on video content now I think it's 80, 82% uh, of uh, all, content, all online. content online will be video by 2020 and that's an increase I think from 17% from 2000 17. It's crazy, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it really yeah. is. Like it's absolutely escalating. Oh, it's, it's like it's it's mental, and you can see it. And I think it was like what was what, I think there's another statistic that said that 95 or is 90 or 95 percent of people were more likely to um, uh, I can't remember the actual thing. It was more likely to, to glean content from a video than they would from text. I think it was 10 percent text and 90 wow. percent video. Such different engagement. Exactly is is higher. So so the idea was really just to kind of train and teach. Uh, businesses how to do it themselves and so they'd be able to go out and kind of mass produce their own video content as often as they wanted um, and that's kind of where FilmSmart came about and that's kind of the road that I took to get here yeah. so now um, I am FilmSmart and I'm teaching businesses and I'm the yeah, festival the, and I'm, 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 I'm so you have three things on the go on film. yeah with a couple of more oh, in, brilliant. In, in, in the works in the works other stuff along the way that's yeah. brilliant um, 
I really, well, first and foremost, like, I think what you're providing is excellent. Me as a business owner myself, I think that there definitely is a demand for, like, you know, someone to teach, come along, show other business owners the way. And no better man than yourself, like, you have a wealth of experience in the film industry. You've been in the game, you have loads of experience. Like, so now that you're turning your attention to business owners um, and just, just helping them tell a story and, like, getting all like reducing costs and everything like that if they sign up to one of our workshops or anything like that like that could save them like over the years like thousands you know what i mean so business owners uh, you're helping them so how could like if you could have a few tips for business owners that may be listening into this podcast what advice would you have just a, a small bit of advice maybe getting started or how to actually be somewhat creative i know creative is kind of an in individual yeah. thing but how would they get the juices flowing i suppose really it's 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 real basic stuff uh that you could do depending on what you want so what one of the things that we do with film smart is we offer kind of a bespoke service as well so the idea is that if you contact me and you are from a recruitment company uh we can gear our workshops towards uh recruitment videos or if you are from a restaurant uh, we can gear our videos towards how to shoot food and things like that but really in terms of like getting started uh, really all you would need to get started is the phone you have in your pocket whatever you have uh, I would argue a, a tripod if need be but you don't need a tripod you can get away with using a coffee cup that's a handy tip you can flip a coffee cup upside uh, down and cut two <laughs> slits in it with the uh, with the scissors and that's your your tripod pro tip um, your pro tip yeah 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 hot <laughs> take on, on tripods uh, watch out tripod industry no um, but the uh, the like you just need a tripod uh, some sort of stability uh, your account, your phone. Uh, I would recommend a third-party app to shoot video. Uh, they always say don't shoot video through your, um, through your terrestrial, through your in-house. Oh, really? Camera. Yeah. Yeah, because third-party apps give you uh, more control. Uh, so, right. so, so heavy-duty apps like Filmic Pro, they allow you, they kind of replicate uh, a camera settings. So they give you, they give you more control over exposure and right. more control over focus and things like that, which you wouldn't necessarily get with your normal camera. If you just want to use your normal camera, that's fine. There's free ones. Uh, open Camera is a really good free app for open video. Camera. Yeah, it's right. actually it's, it's open source, so there's no ads and they're constantly t- tailoring it and adding stuff to it. That's for Android. But really, you just need your phone. You need a coffee cup and you need a microphone. Um, and I would argue uh, you need a mic, a lavalier mic if you want to do, if yeah. you're like a vlogger or something like that, you want to talk to camera, lavalier mic is perfect. You can get one for 15 euro on Amazon. Brilliant. Good quality. That's all you need. Yeah. Uh, you can get a, a directional mic as well. They're a little bit more. They'll sit next to your phone and they'll point at you. But really for like what we're doing or for if you're if you're talking to the camera, you just need a directional mic. You have those three things and you're good to go. And so people, business owners who actually want to create their uh, their content, people are more forgiven, as you were saying before the podcast. So it doesn't have to be like absolute like cin- cinematography kind of... Well, that's the thing. It's Yeah, it's about how it's consumed as much as about how it's made. So you'll have people making... I mean, you want your business to, to, to reflect a certain way and you want your business to look professional. Um, so utilizing tips and tricks like this yeah. uh, will help you achieve that. But an audience is a little bit more forgiving about what they consume online. There's an expectation about the quality a little bit more yeah. because of the amount of stuff that we're consuming. And and you often see it, like sometimes you see these uh, you see these incredibly clever, cheap ads. I'm trying to think of an example for one now um, that are kind of, oh, I can't think of one. One that springs to mind is you know the ad. The, it's not shot on the phone or anything. You know the ad where the father Ted thing where they're all jump, jumping around dancing. And the, there was an ad based on that. I can't remember now. Where right. They're all in the caravan jumping around. It was an ad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's <laughs> all Graham Norton. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. But all you really need is a really simple concept. <laughs> yeah. And if it's funny or if it's direct, that's what screams through to an audience. If that's what captures your message and comes through, so an audience would be a little bit more forgiving about visuals. And I remember once even on a separate thing I remember once uh, a while back we did a, a thing with a band and the band wanted us to create a music video and this is before the whole camera thing and the band they hadn't started out yet they hadn't had an album yet they were putting it together but they'd watched a lot of they'd watched a lot of uh, music videos over the years they were a metal band right and they had this idea and they wanted to have it like in a it was like a plantation and it was in black and white and there was going to be dogs in it and there was right. going to be we were going to shoot various locations in the city and they kept throwing out ideas and I kept thinking who's going to watch this and I was thinking you're going to spend a lot of money on a music video that replicates music videos you grew up watching in the 90s that were shown on MTV that everyone had access to and everyone watched music videos people don't really watch music videos anymore 
So you're probably better off coming up with something that's relatively cheap but clever. Yeah. Like one of the you know the OK Go videos where they they jump around on the treadmills and things like that. Do you ever see those videos? I think I have. Yeah. OK Go are good for coming up with really funny concept cheap yeah. videos. You're better off coming up with a really really cheap concept that can be filmed visually. Uh, you'll get more bang for your book, and in that example, shareable and everything. Exactly. Online. In that yeah. example, they were they wanted a music video that existed on MTV, and MTV doesn't exist anymore. So that audience was gone. So the only people that would have watched that music video after they sunk, and I think it was looking at it, we were talking about four day shoot, day and night. So it was going to be insane. Uh, they would have sunk a lot of money into this. Uh, and it wouldn't have been seen by anyone. Yeah. So I was trying to push for like, oh, why don't you put, why don't we tape phones inside the guitars and have them come out? You know, just a visual. You can see the strings playing yeah. on stage, and you can see everyone oh, that, through their instruments. Yeah, I like I mean? that. But that's an easier visual sell. That wouldn't have cost a lot of money to do, um, and it would have been kind of interesting. And uh, in the end, that's what people would have walked away from remembering. It. So that's I think if you have a really good concept, people are very forgiving. Of, of thing and that said we're talking again a lot of people talk about phones I found a lot of people talk about phones and what they can't do and it's always this talk of you're always leading to a conversation with yeah if I shoot on a phone will I be able to do this will I be able to do that what you can't do what you can do I think for a small business owner outweighs what you can do I mean they're versatile they're quick they're fast there's an incognito element to them. You can yeah. go out and shoot somewhere and no one will, it doesn't draw as much attention as it was using a camera. And, and more importantly, they're easy to use. And I think speed at the end of the day and ease of use trumps everything. Trumps everything. Do you know what I mean? So if you have a really good idea, I think your audience will be very forgiving about how it comes across. And that said, you can shoot excellent quality video now. Oh, um, definitely with the cameras. With the cameras, the, the phones. The yeah. phones that are out now. Like you so you don't have can. to really worry about quality. Uh, maybe the quality of your story, maybe the quality of how you set it up. And yeah. That's why you'd come to myself and film smart because we'd give you the kind of tools to make sure that you're doing it. Yeah. And like some people, like I'm, I've never had experience like doing creative stuff like that. So first, as a business owner, coming to like a workshop of yours, am I? put my brain in the right formation where exactly. I can understand oh this is how you get creative and this is how you think of things yeah and so I think it's definitely valuable and um, what we'd show you is kind of uh, we show you kind of a basic way to do it and then the second half of it is a more kind of creative way to do it specific camera movements how to move this how to yeah. make a video a little bit more dynamic simple things you could do just holding your phone do you know what I mean and, and then there's a thing that would, <laughs> there's a thing I do called uh, which is like an app dump where I spend like 30 minutes just going through apps and saying this app this app this app this app this app because there's so many of them you need to yeah. have that, that, that list constantly updates that's just mean? helpful in any way just, yeah, yeah, take notes if you want to do this add this in if you want to as we were saying earlier on if you want to use a teleprompter you can do that if you want a subtitle video this is how you do it and um, stuff like that is very important actually subtitles i think is something that is really important because most people just watch video. videos exactly that, yeah and i see people doing videos all the time and they're uh they're putting them up online and they are not doing with subtitles and i i don't understand because as you said you're you're scrolling through a feed you've only got nanoseconds i don't know yeah. the actual stats you it probably, probably more is to <laughs> catch someone's attention there. and if i look at a video and I don't know what they're saying. It takes extra time and thought to click on that button to say what I, I'd have to actually really want to engage yeah, with what it. What have we come to as humans? Exactly. Way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But if there's text there, I'm more likely to yeah, stop and I'm read it. Definitely the same, hundred um, percent. And I subtitling a video is really, really important. And there's really simple apps out there. You can just load your video in. It'll interpret what you're saying and it'll subtitle it for you. It can change all the fonts. Brilliant. And then you just have to go in and. Yeah, Auto-correct some words if it didn't work properly and stuff like that. But you can subtitle an entire video in a relatively short space of time, and that sort of stuff is 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 because I used to actually want to manually write it. Yeah. But you can that sort of stuff is is a, is a game changer and time saving, especially if you don't know much about cameras yeah. and don't know much about video and you just want to get in and, and, and make it yourself. Yeah. I think you've provided loads of value here for business owners. You know, getting them set up and everything. Um, if they want to check you out, where can they find you? Yeah, they can find me on. Uh, www.filmsmartpro.com yeah. uh, or Filmsmart Productions and you can catch us on social the same Filmsmart Pro and um, so we're running a number of workshops uh, in the next couple of weeks and um, uh, there's one in Dublin next week and then I think there is one in Wicklow uh, two weeks after that and we're moving around and um, is because we're mobile, country, or would it yeah, just we're, be around? well, we're mobile, so we're we're mobile, we're, like we're, uh, <laughs> we're dealing with different businesses in different regions, so we'll be moving around. Um, uh, so yeah, you can check out our website. Up, upcoming workshops are, are listed there. Brilliant, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks very much for coming on, and uh, hope to speak to you again soon. Perfect. All right. Cheers. Thank you. Cool.